When you think of competition for the brand new 2020 Corvette C8, you most likely don't think about the Mustang. I mean, of course you see drag races between C7s and the GT350, but most likely in direct comparison around the track, you're thinking more of a Porsche or even an Acura NSX. Much of that has to do with the new mid-engine layout of the Corvette. But with that being said, the only car to drum up close to the amount of attention the Corvette C8 has is the 2020 Mustang GT500. Two cars that are very different, yet strive for the same end goal, being a highly capable track car. The Corvette of course has certainly achieved that, especially with the new layout, but it would be a false statement to say that the Mustang has not done the same. The little brother GT350 has more than proven itself as a track capable Mustang. So Ford is taking this success and pushing the envelope with the new GT500. I would even venture to say that many people would be stuck on which car to get. Price wise, with similar options, the two vehicles fall close to one another, with the Mustang being the slightly cheaper option. Base price for the 3LT Corvette is 76 grand, while the GT500 starts at 73.9. Motor Trend tasked none other than Randy Popes with putting these two cars head to head. This is what he had to say about them versus each other on the track. Power wise, the GT500 comes in with 760 horsepower a much loftier number than the C8's 495 horsepower figure. But both of these amounts come from a V8, but the Stang receives some help from a supercharger while the VET sticks with the naturally aspirated setup. That of course will change in the next version of the Corvette. Randy has hailed the C8 as being extremely precise and responsive around the track taking advantage of the new weight distribution. The Corvette is able to push hard out of the corner. It feels much quicker than the car that have much more power than it. Traction truly is a huge thing on the track and the Corvette has plenty of it. It really shows in the 2.8 second zero to 60 time. Randy is quoted as saying that the Corvette takes advantage of placing the engine over the rear wheels and the loading successfully creates forward thrust far better than any Corvette before it. This is progress people and progress is very good. The GT500 on the other hand is aggressive but in a controllable way. Randy says that while the C8 is precise, the GT500 hoons along. But even with all the power and weight, it seems Ford was able to make a car that was very well balanced. Steering is a key component of that and it stays alive all the way through the corner. The real feedback you get helps to keep the car in line or out of line if you want to swing the back out for a drifting turn. Randy was also very complimentary to the Mustang's cross-plane based V8. He said that there was no power fade during his use of the car on the track, and that helped to manage an almost 170 mile per hour run on the back straight at the Virginia International Raceway. Many supercharged V8s run very hot, and that results in some power fading, but so far not from this beast. Both cars come together in similarity with a first time use of the Tremec dual clutch transmission. The Corvette receives an eight speed while the GT500 tacks in a seven speed. Randy went as far as to say that the GT500's auto mode is beginning to rival the Porsche's PDK. With that being said, the Tremec will be at its best on the track. And I would venture to say that during normal daily driving, especially downshifting, the PDK most likely still has the best dual clutch available. But nevertheless, the new Tremec in the Mustang comes with an over torque feature. This means that the clutch includes extra power from the engine to help push through the shift. Instead of a loss of power during your change of gear, you actually get a smack of power, much like when you power shift a manual transmission. Randy comments as saying that through corners, this is lessened as the car learns when and when not to apply this over torque feature. He follows up with that comment as saying Ford should be proud of their new transmission. While he was happy with the dual clutch option in the Corvette, it just didn't receive as much praise. So here's to hoping that there's some more fine tuning on the VETS transmission to come. In addition to the dual clutch transmission, both cars share the ability to have magnetic ride systems for their suspension. The GT500 comes standard with this option, whereas the Corvette C8 you have to tick both the Z51 box as well as the magnetic ride option box. 
but with the magnetic ride systems, you get versatility. These suspensions can give you the best of both worlds, soft and luxurious for your daily driving around roads, then responsive and rigid for on the track. This new suspension truly does add to the everyday drivability of these cars. Randy did mention that in the GT500, while it helped soak up the bumps, it felt a bit like you were floating during higher speeds. Usually you want to maintain that planted feeling, as floating can make the driver feel uneasy. It seems on the Corvette he never got this feeling. From there we had braking power. The Corvette comes with 13.3 inch fronts and 13.8 inch rears. The Ford ups the ante considerably with 16 and a half vented front brakes and matching for the rear. Both cars had considerable stopping power, but Randy did notice a bit of a spongy feel from the Mustang. He never felt a loss of stopping power or anything during his runs, but he felt that there was considerable travel distance needed to stop from higher speeds, which can be a bit concerning during feel. It was mentioned that the brakes were bled twice during the tracking day, yet the spongy braking feeling just persisted. He even commented saying that was odd as the GT350 brakes were almost too much to him, that he almost only had to use his big toe to stop. So he felt perfection was somewhere in between the GT500 and the GT350, but we also have to remember braking can feel different from person to person, so make sure you take that into consideration. At the end of the day, they were both extremely good competitors, Randy mentioned. His final comments say the Shelby is a raging, proficient power vehicle, with the C8 Corvette having precision, potential, and style. They both bring you tons of excitement, but the choice is really left up to you. It was also noted by Randy at the very end that he did have a carbon fiber track package GT500 at his disposal for testing, and with that equipped, it did leave the C8 behind fairly quickly. But much of that is due to better tuning, a suspension upgrade, along with the racetrack ready R Compound Sport Cup 2s. But keep in mind that that adds $18,500 to the price tag, or almost one third of the base price for a Corvette C8. In other words, it ain't cheap. The last thing I wanted to add in today's video is the lineup of performance figures we have been given from Motor Trend. As you can imagine, you will see some very interesting numbers. First, checking out the power figures, you can see the weight to power is significantly better in the Shelby versus the Corvette C8. 5.5 and 5.3 pounds to horsepower versus the C8's meager 7.2. But then we check out the performance times and it clearly shows you what grip really can do for the Corvette by going mid-engine. I mean, this has been a hard transition for many people that are longtime vet fans, but the car will outrun a stock GT500 to 100 miles per hour by two tenths of a second. I mean, come on, you can hate 0 to 60 times all you want, but 0 to 100 miles per hour is a pretty real race for many people. It even has the GT500's number in the quarter mile, and just wait until the Z06 comes to town. Breaky times were fairly close, with the C8 being nestled between the stock and carbon package GT500 at a stopping of 97 feet. You can also see where those Sport Cup 2s make a huge difference in grip when we check out the lateral G numbers. The Corvette C8 holds a 1.04 G compared to the stock GT500 at 1.01 G. Slap on the Cup 2s and you now have a full lateral G measurement of 1.05 from the GT500. It is certainly exciting times for both Ford and Chevrolet. Now I know many people are going to break down every little part of this article and try to take their sides, but just remember that both of these cars are extremely capable. For one person the Mustang makes sense, while the Vet is the clear winner for another. I hope we can all take a moment to step back and realize the incredible time we live in. I'm all for competition, but I feel both of these cars will take care of their owners extremely well. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the smile you have on your face that your car brings you, and both cars certainly will not fail in that mission. Now, as most of my viewers know, I have chosen to go the way of the Corvette C8. I'm thoroughly impressed with what Ford has done with the Mustang GT350 and now the GT500, but I just feel the Corvette C8 is the right move for me. I absolutely loved my C6 Corvette I owned, and ever since buying my current Audi R8, I knew mid-engine is the way. 
It's a hard feeling to explain, but it just feels so special to drive, and the C8 is what will bring the next generation of Corvettes to the next level of potential. I truly can't wait to share this all with you. And speaking of my Corvette, I have some really important news to share with you on my order status in my next video. So make sure you take this moment to have your bell notification hit so that you can know when my latest video arrives since YouTube fails at that simple task. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure you think about supporting my channel and simply hitting that thumbs up button, it is extremely appreciated. For anyone new to the channel, think about subscribing and joining our ever growing community. Next year is going to be a big year for the channel and I can't wait to show you the things I have in store for my Corvette C8. As always, you all take care and I'll see you next video.